Architecture is a multidisciplinary and collaborative profession. And what that means is that more often than not, architects have to work with interior designers, landscape architects, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, and what's that P thing in the MEP acronym? Oh, plumbing engineers and the list goes on and on and because of this it becomes very hard for architects to hide their mistakes and by hard i mean really hard for all of you who use archicad to execute your work we are today going to look at five annoying <clears throat> mistakes that could have been really easily avoided hello everyone my name is namara alan and welcome to Hi, it's Nayland and welcome to Knowledge Studio. If you are new to this channel, I recommend that you subscribe below, hit the like button and let's get started with this video. So the very first mistake is drafting improperly. Due to the collaborative nature of architecture, sometimes you have to do the modeling, someone else has to do the working drawings, someone else has to do the structure drawings, and so on and so forth. So more often than not, you do your model and forward it to someone who's going to do working drawings. And that is when they realize your mistakes in terms of are your walls parallel to each other? Are they skewed? Are they straight or do they follow axes? Because when you try to dimension a wall which is not parallel to another wall in Archicad, you'll find that some dimensions will not appear. So the guy who's supposed to dimension will end up doing your work that you were supposed to do when you were modeling in the first place. So pretty important point to look out for. Make sure that your things are, unless you are pretty intentional about a wall that is at a specific angle, keep it simply orthogonal. Because I mean, at some point we need to stop. What am I doing with my life? Because if we do away with all this computer stuff and everything that is taken over recently and we go old school, you will realize that you'd have a drawing board and square, T-squares and angled squares and everything else that would help you in the drafting. And you knew that when time reaches for drafting, you need to have a T-square and you need to have an angled square in order to keep things straight or put things at a specific angle that you would measure out with a protractor. So in order to avoid skewed things in Archicad, I would recommend your T-square and angled square to be the shift button. Just whenever you pick an attribute, maybe a wall, and you want to draw, you click the first point, hold the shift down, and you will see that the wall is being guided in a guideline, whether you're going up, whether you're going down, whether you're going sideways. And if you want specific angles, you have Ctrl E as your tool for a protractor. Press Ctrl E and then you can be able to specifically go, go for an angle that you want to put the wall at. So the second mistake is not saving or relying on autosave. Now I know that Archicad has got this beautiful feature that allows you to recover any kind of work when something happens. For example, the program crashes, which it sometimes does, or the computer crashes. So, but the mistake is relying on it. Because as a beginner, you work on a project on day one, do all your work, and you forget to save, you know. All of us do forget to do things. So you forget to save and Day two, you open Archicad and you discover there's this thing that recovered your work and you work on it and you do not save again. Day three, you open Archicad and you're like, this is the best program like ever <laughs> because you find everything there and you continue to work and become complacent. And day four, you open Archicad and you're like, where is everything? And just like that, you have lost 
three days worth of work three painful days worth of work you don't want to be doing that so i will recommend a control s for you for save i mean it's not too much to ask you have fixed the wall tool you have drawn the form that you like and you're happy with it hit control s i am stressing this because it happened to me once i was like in my third year of architecture school so i start working at about 2 p.m and worked throughout the afternoon and worked throughout the evening and also through the night which happens a lot and at about 3 a.m my body starts giving way and my mind goes like I realize now it's time for me to sleep and I hit close and this message comes in asking me whether I need to save and because I was very tired I accidentally hit don't save. I started panicking and I remembered oh there's auto save. In the morning I wake up and open Archicad and the like there's no trace of the file that I worked on all day all night. So you don't want that my friend pressing control s you it will save you more than you can imagine So the third mistake is about the the most used tools in the toolbox and that is the wall and the slab I guess So the first issue with walls is placement and I don't know whether it is because beginners have not learned how to place walls in in Archicad or even move them around but for some reason you'll find someone having a wall on top of a wall and i sit back and i'm like what is this person trying to do because even in 3d archicad is struggling trying to find out which wall to display on top of another so you get this weird flickering effect please don't do that i really don't know whatever is happening maybe in the comments you can let me know why this thing happens and one of the reasons that I think this happens is that let's say you wanted to have your walls about 3.2 meters high because by default in an Archicad workspace you will have the story heights at 3 meters. If you want your walls to be 3.2 meters high, a beginner will just select all these walls and go into the settings and change them to not linked and manually put in 3.2 which is an easier thing to do but the problem with this is that whenever you do it and you go to the first floor now you have walls that are already popping from the ground floor so you have ground floor walls that are showing in the first floor and if you try to draw the walls which are supposed to be on the first floor you will have issues because then you will have wall on top of your wall so in any circumstance i wouldn't recommend anyone to change their walls to not linked because if for some reason i needed a wall to be one meter high what i personally like to do is to go into the settings of that wall and instead of unlinking it to the story above i will just put in a negative value for example from the difference of the height from the top I can put in negative two meters such that the one meter remember the wall height is three meters so the one meter becomes the wall height that i need instead of unlinking it but that's just a preference but using that can actually save you a lot of time and effort so the other issue with walls is i have made a recent video about wall junctions so a link is somewhere up here you need to you can go and watch it in order to solve issues that come in when you have walls meeting and what you can do with that because sometimes Akika does not do a good job in determining which wall should be showed or given preference over others and the issue with slabs is that sometimes you want to multiply a slab that you already created on the ground floor and put it on the first floor and what we would do usually is maybe in 3d just grabbing the wall and then elevating it by three meters but the problem with that when you go to the ground floor 
you will find that the slab has not shifted from the ground floor to the first floor. So now you have two slabs on the ground floor, which is not really good. Because imagine a situation where you have 20 stories and you now have to multiply these slabs 20 times. So you are going to elevate this thing 20 times and these slabs are still on the ground floor. So you have this 20 slabs on the ground floor and yet in 3D it appears as if they are on different stories. So what I would recommend you doing is to select these slabs or even the walls, hit Ctrl U in order to elevate in 3D. After setting in the height by which you are elevating, make sure you check the set to home story. And then, so now you will have this each slab on its own story. The fourth mistake is about openings. And from the beginning, you grab the doors, you drop them in there, you drag the windows and drop them in there. But at the end of the day, you find that the defaults of these two things are not giving you a pleasant result because by default, you may find a door is about 2.1 meters high. And by default, you find this other window is about collectively from the ground up is about 2.4 meters high. And then you get this undesirable effect where you don't follow the lintel and you, you know in practice that shouldn't happen no I, I get it that when you are starting to design you don't want to think about you know dimensions and all that but as the design evolves you need to think about these things the heights and where is the lintel line and what does that mean because I like to think of these openings like an eye on someone's face. So imagine having your openings on a building like this. Oh God, that was creepy. Please don't do that to my face again, okay? You don't want that to happen to you. And you can also explore with the different things that come in because, you know, the eye has different parts to it, a lot of things there. So instead of leaving it as a basic, basic, basic opening, you can add some definition to it. Explore with the casings, explore with the transoms, explore with... Oh God, you will find that most of the time there is lack of such details that I think add so much to the openings. So the fifth and final mistake that I have for you guys is line weights. And this is a huge one for Archicad beginners. Because if, for example, a pro Archicad user from maybe Graphisoft and a beginner elsewhere decided to print their work, they displayed it on the wall for you, right away you'd know, you'd tell the difference. And it would be very clear that someone is just not yet there. I don't know, it would be like watching a Hollywood movie blockbuster and then watching like um, maybe one of my tutorials. No. <laughs> I mean, my tutorials aren't that terrible, are they? <laughs> Come on, be nice. Give me a like. Okay, I mean, it will be evident that this is a quack and this is way professional. They add a lot of detail, a lot of depth to your drawing. I mean, it's a 2D drawing, but line weights are responsible for adding the depth and the definition that you need in a 2D drawing. I have a tutorial about how to improve your line weights with the uh, insection and the link is somewhere around a around there and also in the description below if you're interested go and watch to improve your sections and hopefully i'll be making more in the future to help you with the line weights because the tricky thing about line weights is that they're pretty much dependent on the scale the line weights that will work for you at 1 to 100 will be terrible at 1 to 50 and worse at 1 to 200 so i get it line weights is a tricky ground and every element in Archicad, every element comes with a lot of colors, a lot of pen weights, 
pen and and it's really hard to figure out so what i would recommend you to do is to change everything to black and white like i mean like if you're done with modeling the client has approved the design and all that just do it with the colors make it black and white graphic override use a graphic override of black and white begin from there select the walls make them thicker or thinner print it out look at what it looks like if you're satisfied if it's not yet there tweak it further <laughs> and with time you will get it you'll get it and your work will improve with time so i mean like i also have to work on these videos to get to that level that is acceptable thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye